Let us just start out by saying how much we appreciate you guys checking out this video. We know Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope has been out for like a week and a half now and heaps of creators got review copies of it as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say is thank you for supporting the little guy or the little couple. You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. So the title of this video is probably going to be something like is Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope the Mario RPG that we've all been waiting for? And while we don't want to give you a definitive answer now because we want you to actually watch the video, we can tell you that it was at least better than whatever this was. But we do have a surprisingly large amount of complaints for a game that we genuinely think is really good. So there is a lot to discuss, both good and bad. Do us one last little favor and hit that like button and subscribe if you're someone new. Sit back and let us tell you why a really good, fun game doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so let's talk about the Rabbids first. <gasps> While some people were understandably skeptical around the first game's release, we do feel like Kingdom Battle did do enough to prove itself. The Rabbids teaming up with Chris Pratt, I mean Mario, and his crew is a great idea, but we do understand if the Rabbids aren't your cup of tea. <laughs> this isn't morning dew collected from the rainforest mixed with pixie dust. Disgusting. I actually really like the Rabbids, which is kind of surprising because I am not a fan of stupid humor. And for the most part, this is just really stupid humor. So look, I get it if you find these guys annoying or just a general pain in your ass. Like I can hear my dad now, what is this crap? Get it off my TV. But this seriously isn't a make or break. There are plenty of well-respected individuals out there who hate the Rabbids and still really, really enjoy this game. Like OJ from Player Essence comes to mind. Love him or hate him though, there is no denying that these little fuzzballs do add so much to the game. So one of the biggest problems that people had with the latest Paper Mario is that there was just so many toads. <laughs> there was just literally thousands of them. And that's because the developers' intelligence systems weren't allowed to add any of their own unique characters to the Mario universe. Enter the Rabbids. You've obviously got the ripoffs, like Rabbid Peach and Rabbid Luigi, who I actually think are fantastic with their own unique, quirky little personalities. Like, Rabbid Peach is so sassy, man. She's like an Instagram princess, if you know what I mean. Healing bad, literally. Kind of a But the Rabbid characters really shine when Ubisoft introduces a purely original one, like Edge. I love Edge. They really do add so much to the story. A dark brooding emo will always capture our hearts. But the mystery surrounding them throughout the game is really good. Obviously we won't spoil anything, but we will say that they almost feel like the main character. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold up. The main character's not Mario? That's impossible. Nope, and it actually works really well. Fully fleshed out original characters are just what the Marioverse needs. Exactly. Okay, so we just touched on it, so I feel like now's a pretty good time to bring up the story, don't you think? Yeah. So basically, you set out to find Rosalina, save the sparks, and defeat the darkness. This definitely isn't Final Fantasy level of storytelling, but for Mario, it's incredible. Like, it might just be the best we've gotten since some of the early Paper Marios. So we did want to compare the story to the first Mario and Rabbids game, but we can't because to be completely honest, we just can't remember it. Did it even have much of a story? I guess that that in itself is a pretty good comparison though. Kingdom Battle's story was obviously pretty forgettable, whereas Sparks of Hope is full of fun, mystery, and interesting characters. Yeah, there's so much more to this game than its predecessor. Even with stuff like cutscenes, which sounds pretty obvious now that I bring it up, like of course there's more and better cutscenes, that's pretty much where like the whole story is told. So um, the, the cutscenes are good, I like them. Thank you, Tom, for that interesting and valuable take. Think good. I like thing. Hey. So this all leads us back to our first negative, and it is one that was pretty obvious right from the get-go. The rabbits have all of these little funny one-liners, and all of the side characters have great voice acting work, which again adds so much to the rabbits in the story. But you know who doesn't have many, if any, lines? Mario and his friends. Yep, it's pretty annoying that all the other characters get such nice lines and then all you ever hear from Mario is Wahoo! Like, was Chris Pratt busy or something? Couldn't you have just like given them a call? Like, hey Chris, 
kind of do some lines. Like voice lines. <laughs> it's so obvious how little voice acting there is for the Mario crew when it's in an RPG setting like this. And when Ubisoft clearly wanted all the other characters to have full dialogue. The next thing that Sparks of Hope pushes a lot more than its predecessor is exploration. You've got free roam on a number of interesting environments that change as you progress the story and clear away the darkness. It really does feel like a proper RPG, you know? There's heaps of side quests and collectibles to find simply by roaming around the world. It also adds a lot of value because we reckon that you could easily double your playtime if you wanted to explore everything and complete every side quest. I will say that it feels really weird to not be able to jump in a Mario game though. Like with such an emphasis on wandering around, I thought it would have been a nice addition. Maybe this is just me, and I know there's other Mario titles that have done it, but I don't like it. In my purely subjective opinion, I want to jump and I will complain about it as much as I want. There are quite a lot of puzzles in this game too, and while almost all of them in the first world are super easy, they do get progressively harder and more fun. We actually questioned why they were even there at the beginning. They definitely didn't add much to the gameplay, but I will admit that the further you got, the better they became. Your little robot narrator friend, whose name eludes me right now, it's like Bebop or something weird like that, he ends up getting all these abilities, so you'll often have to backtrack to previous planets to solve puzzles. And this just ties back into that whole exploration thing, doesn't it? The mechanics in this game do tie together really nicely. But the bread and butter of any tactical or strategy RPG game is of course the tactical battles. This is where you'll want to spend most of your time in the game because despite the exploration and puzzle solving being really good, the battles are fire. We are both mad fans of tactical RPGs, so it would have had to do something pretty bad for us to not like it. But even if you don't like the grid formula of stuff like Advance Wars and Fire Emblem, we reckon Mario and Rabbids could sell you on the genre, mainly because there are no grids. You have so much freedom here. Being able to roam around the battlefield, albeit in a limited space, just feels like such a natural progression for the series and for the genre as a whole. You're also able to switch between the characters whenever you want, so there's no turn order for your team. Yeah, this throws in a whole new level of strategy as well. Like, do I move all my paces into position before I go in for a kill, or do I just build on the previous character's turn? You can also jump off of your teammates and dash into enemies, which causes damage. So sometimes if you get all three of your teammates to dash the same guy, you can actually take someone out before anyone has ever even fired a bullet. Each character has a special move in addition to their standard attack, which also have their own cool little cutscene. Rabbit Peach can heal, Bowser can summon little minions, so on and so forth. And in addition to that, again, each character can also use a spark on their turn. So the sparks basically act like little upgrades. They have a huge variety of things they can do, meaning that you can build out your team in a whole load of different ways and find something that works for you. Buffs, debuffs, wave attacks, defensive maneuvers, you name it, the sparks can do it. The whole battle system is ridiculously addictive and it definitely has that just one more feel to it. You know when you want to do just one more battle before you go to sleep and then all of a sudden it's like 5am? Yeah, it literally happened to me last night. The tactical battles for sure have an emphasis on freedom, meaning that they are accessible for newcomers, but don't get us wrong, they are definitely more strategy orientated. Yeah, they don't lose any of that tactical feel and veteran fans of the genre will definitely love this game. While it is a bit more open, if you know that you don't like SRPGs, then I don't think this game will convince you otherwise, but it is a good jumping in point if you've never played one. The only issue that we have with the battles is that every damn time you run into a measly Goomba in the overworld, one of these huge scale fights is initiated. It can get pretty tedious and we do wish that there was a way that you could just stomp them and get them out of your way. So this problem combined with the next is by far my least favorite thing about the game long load times. The Goomba battles would be fine if you could just skip them and get back to exploring in no time at all, but you're forced to wait while the game loads you into the fight arena, and then again while it loads you back into the overworld, and this can take quite some time. We know that this is a combination of the game looking so good and the limited specs of the Switch, but it is so annoying having to wait 30 seconds to skip a fight and then accidentally run into the same enemy and have to do it all over again. So let's answer that burning question. Who pulls off the beanie better? <laughs> like for me, subscribe for Tom. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, subscribe for Laura because then we'll get more subscribers. <laughs> because it's you. <laughs> I can see it. We're going to get like one like on this video and it's going to be from me. <laughs> from you? Yeah, I'm going to vote you for myself. You can't vote for yourself. Why? It's <laughs> the only vote I'm going to get. <laughs> I'd vote for you. Oh, thanks. That's okay. Two likes. No, but seriously, let's answer the real burning question. Is Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope the Mario RPG that we've all been waiting for? The Mario RPG that we deserve? Drum roll, please. Yes. Yes, it is. Sparks of Hope does have its issues, but overall, it's an incredibly fun experience that is sure to please both Mario and RPG fans. We're stoked that Nintendo trusted Ubisoft with their biggest IP because the result has really fleshed out the plumber's catalog and it has given us a game that we have been waiting a really long time for. I would say Sparks of Hope is an A tier title. Not quite a must own on the Switch, but definitely a game that you won't regret buying. But as usual, let us know your thoughts. Are you planning on picking this game up or have you already got it? And if so, where would you rank it on the tier list? Let's continue the discussion in the comments below. Thank you so much everyone for watching. We really appreciate every single one of you and we can't wait to see you next week for another video. Bye. <laughs> now goats like make screaming sounds like humans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>